الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال عز وجل في كتابه العزيز بعد نعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو كان لابن آدم واديان من مال لأحب أن يكون له ثالث ولا يملأ فاه إلا التراب ويتوب الله على من تاب أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear friends, respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters The surah that I have recited before you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is delivering a very great message in this surah And that message is for each and every single one of us Our lives are moving so fast Day in and day out. We don't even realize Jumu'ah comes and Jumu'ah goes. We're into the masjid for Jumu'ah. Next week again, we're going to be here again. We don't realize how fast our lives are moving. How fast this time is, this time that we are in, how fast it's going from us. And that closer... Every single second, every single minute, you and I were getting closer and closer to something that is very great. And at times for that, we need a very great reminder. You know, because we think that it's fine. I'm living my life. Nothing is going to happen to me. I am 18. I am 19. I'm 20. I have a long life ahead of me. When I hit 40, when I hit 50... Then I'll think about coming to the masjid. Then I'll think about obeying Allah. Then I'll think about praying salah. Then I'll think about reading Quran. But wallahi, my dear respected brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care how old you are or how young you are. When it is time to go, you'll go. The only thing that the only thing that matters in the sight of Allah Ta'ala is what you take back with you. What you take with you in the Akhirah. So this message in the Surah is very great. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala wants you and I to figure it out as soon as possible. Allah Ta'ala wants you and I to realize and to figure this out. That what are we doing with our lives? Where are we heading towards? What are we accomplishing from our lives? What is my goal? Is my goal to, you know, just accumulate more and more money? Is my goal to just make more and more money? You know, I'm making 5,000, how I can make 6,000? I'm making 1 million, how I can make 2 million? I have one business, how I can make another business? That's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ very beautifully says, لَوْ كَانَ لِإِبْنِ آدَمَ وَادِيَانِ مِن ذَهَبٍ if Allah Ta'ala were to give the son of Adam two valleys of gold, he'll make dua to Allah, Ya Allah, when am I getting the third one? Where's the third one, Ya Allah? To have two valleys of gold, so much gold, Ya Allah, where can I get the other one? So the Prophet then says, This belly of son of Adam, 
can never be filled except by the dirt of his grave. That's the only thing that can fill his belly. And this is in our nature. Allah Ta'ala wants you and I to figure out as soon as possible. It is in our nature. Well, right in the beginning, Allah Ta'ala says, Al-Hakum. Al-Hakum. Right? It has distracted you. It has distracted you. Now the question is, what has distracted us? Right? What is there that is distracting you and I? Allah Ta'ala left it blank for you and I to figure out. And this is what majority of the Mufassireen, they say, that it is for you and I to figure out what is distracting us. If it is my phone during Salah that is distracting me, I need to let it go. If it is my friends who are keeping me away from the remembrance of Allah, I want to go pray Salah. My friend and my buddy comes up to me, hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm about to go pray Fajr in the masjid. Oh, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Is everything okay? What did you have last night for dinner? Come on, it's fine. We'll, we'll pray later. I'm trying to go for Isha Salah. What's going on? No, pray later. It's fine. If it's your friend, you have to let him go. Allah Ta'ala left it blank. Al-Hakum. It has distracted you. What is distracting us from the remembrance of Allah? The earlier and the sooner we figure it out, the better it is for your Akhirah. Whether it may be your friends, whether it may be your family members, whether it may be anyone in your life that is keeping you away from Allah, and for each and every single person is different. You know, you could sit down and watch the news for hours and hours and hours, and read newspaper for hours and hours, wait for the latest report to come out for hours and hours. Oh, when it is time to recite Quran, what do you do? I think today I, 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 did, I read two ayat. That, that should be enough, inshallah. You know, tomorrow I might read or I might not read. Do you know Surah Fatiha? Your, is your Surah Fatiha good? Can you recite Surah Fatiha properly? No, I don't know. How old are you? I'm 60 years old. When was, when was the last time you recited Surah Fatiha to someone? I used to recite it to someone when I was a kid. And I've been praying my Salah. 60 years of my life I've been praying Salah. Do I know if I'm reciting what I am correctly? Is my Surah Fatiha correct? When was the last time I came up to someone and told them, Can you help me out? Can you listen to me? I am doing this every single day. I'm doing an amal. This, this act of salah every single day. Imagine. And you're resurrected in the court of Allah on the day of Qiyamah. And Allah Ta'ala says, Look, your salah is nullified. There's no such thing. Because your Surah Fatiha had nothing in there. You didn't know how to recite the Quran properly. You were supposed to praise me. But... You started cursing upon Allah and Ayyadu Billah. You changed the wordings. This is what we need to do, right? What's, what's, what are we trying to get from our lives? We need, we need to realize. And the sooner we, re we, re we realize, the better we'll get in terms of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right in the beginning says, Al-Hakum, it has distracted you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, At-Takathur. Al-hakum al-takathur, al-takathur, the abundance of something, right? And the abundance of what? The abundance of what? What is it that is distracting us? So over here, the Mufassireen, they give three meanings. They give three meanings of al-takathur. The very first meaning they give of al-takathur is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the desire to want more and more and more, that has distracted you, Right? The desire to want more and more. You got one phone, the next one comes out, I have to get it. It's my desire, I have to follow it. If I'm not following it, oh, something's going to happen. I have one house, how can I make another house? I have one business, how I can go ahead and invest in another business and make more, more, more. And this is the nature of Ibn Adam, the son of Adam. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says it. There's no wrong in that. Nothing wrong in that. What's wrong is... The desire to have more and more along those lines, when you go ahead and you start working for more and more, along those lines you forget about Allah. You forget about Allah. You have no time for deen. Why? I have to work. If I don't work, how am I supposed to provide my family? The Muadhan says, Hayy ala salah. You're saying, No, I have to go work. I can't do anything. I come to success. My success is in my job. So what wealth, what barakah is that wealth going to give you? 
So now this, that's distracting you, that's distraction. If that is keeping you away from the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala, you know what to do with your life. The abundance to have more and more and more, to accumulate more and more. The second meaning they give is At-Tafakhur Ma'at Takathur. At-Tafakhur, sometimes you meet people that have a lot. But what do they do? They tend to boast about it. Hey, I have this much, how much do you have? I own this and I own that. Look at my car and look at your car. Look what I'm driving. Look at my house, look at your house. That does not matter in the sight of Allah Ta'ala. You're going towards a wrong direction. You've taken a whole wrong perspective of your life. You're going towards a whole wrong area. You're searching for things that you shouldn't be searching for. You're getting towards things you shouldn't be getting towards. It is from Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala can take it away from you, keep you on the streets. In a split second, Allah Ta'ala can do that to you. Or you can have so much, but not be happy and commit suicide, which we see in this day and age. People have so much. So much, millions and millions of dollars. But what happens? You hear in the news, this guy, he owns so much, killed himself. Why? I was searching for happiness. I couldn't find happiness. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to search. التفاخر مع التكاثر To boast to others. Right? When Fir'aun, and we know about Fir'aun. Fir'aun, of course, he was a king of his time. He had so much wealth. His kingdom owned everything. Wanted to do whatever he will. So amazingly about him, it's written that when he was passing away, when he was about to die, of course we know when Musa alayhi salam crossed the sea, and he was following Musa and of course Bani Israel. So he starts drowning. While he starts drowning, of course now at that time, at that specific moment, Allah Ta'ala highlights that in the Qur'an. It speaks of that incident. Whereas when he's about to drown, when he's drowning, he says, you know, now I believe in Allah. Now I believe in the Ilah. Now I believe in the God of Musa and Harun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right after, Al-an وَقَدْ عَصَيْتَ قَبْلُ وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Right? You believe now. Now is the time you're believing. Right? Now that you can see the Akhirah. Now you know you have nowhere to turn to. You know it's over. You know, I have nowhere to go. Now is the time you're doing tawbah? Now is the time you're repenting to Allah? Right? I gave you so much life before. At that point, you couldn't repent to me, you couldn't turn to me. But now you're coming towards me? Al-an, waqad asayta qabl, before your life you were disobeying me? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً Until this day and age, Allah ta'ala has left him a sign for you and I. Pharaoh's body, you see it. Fir'aun's body. Allah Ta'ala says, we will save and we'll, we'll, we'll protect your body till the day of Qiyamah. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً So that you may be a sign for those who are coming after you. So that no one can claim, hey, I am your Rabb, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْعَالَى So that's why Imam Al-Nawawi, rahimahullah, he says about the life of Fir'aun, he says, مَاتَ مَلِكُ مِصْرِ بَعِيدًا عَنْ عَرْشِهِ بَعِيدًا عَنْ سُلْطَانِهِ لا طبيب يداويه ولا صديق يواصيه ولا عين تبكيه. He says the king of Misr he is dying away, far away from his palace, far away from his palace, far away from his kingdom. لا طبيب يداويه. There is no doctor to cure him. There is no doctor to take care of him. Right? When it is time to go, you have to go. You can take, you can bring all the doctors of the world, bring them together to work and operate on your body. But it's time to leave. No one can bring back that soul for you. So he says, لا طبيب يداويه There is no doctor to take care of him. ولا صديق يواصيه There is no friend. He doesn't have any companion to sit right beside him, to moan, to cry for him. ولا عين تبكيه No eye to shed a tear for him. This is the situation he is dying in. So what use is that wealth? What good is that wealth doing you if it is keeping you away from the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala? which you run towards so much, you boast about it so much to others, what good is that wealth for you? What good is it doing you? Mulana Zakaria rahmatullahi he writes a very beautiful incident. And this is about a king. So he says that there was a king and one day he told his people, his ministers and his army, that tomorrow 
I want to go ahead and see my kingdom. You know, I want to see my kingdom. I want to see different, different areas, different, different places. I want to see what I own, you know. So he tells the army to get ready. Be ready. Tomorrow is the day. He tells his servants, he tells his khuddam, hey, you know, I need the best of the best garment tomorrow. I want to have a nice big breakfast, you know, and I need a good horse that I can ride upon. And everything should be good. You know, everything should be perfect tomorrow. So they all get ready. Next day comes. The king gets ready. He has a very beautiful garment. He tells his army to get ready. He has a good meal. He says goodbye to his family. So he starts his journey. And he's visiting different, different areas of his kingdom. You know, going from one place to the other. Uh, seeing the rivers, seeing the trees, beautiful gardens, seeing the people, different, different people. And he's on his horse and, you know, with all pride and takabbur, he's just going all around. So, this one fakir, this one poor guy, uh, in thousands of people behind him, his army behind him. This one fakir, this one poor guy, ripped up garment, torn garment, uh, you know, hair everywhere. Uh, looks like he didn't, he was a skinny guy. Looked like he didn't eat for days. So he comes up in front of his horse. Comes up in front of his, runs in front of his horse and, you know, stops his horse. Like, hey, stop, 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 stop. So the king goes, hey, who are you? I don't know you. Why are you telling me to stop? All this army behind me, you're telling all these people to stop. For what reason? So he goes, I have to talk to you, king. I, have to, I need to speak to you. So the king goes, I don't need to speak to you. You're a fakir. Talk to, talk to my ministers, you know, talk to these guys in the back. He tells, no, 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 king, I have to speak to you. It's something very important. I have to talk to you about it. It's, it's, it's urgent, you know? So the king goes, okay, if it's very, okay, talk. I'm listening. Speak from there. No, king, I can't speak from there. I need to come very close to you. It's a secret. I have to tell it to you in your ears. I have to speak it to you about it in your ear. So the king goes, oh, it might be something very important. Come, let me listen to it. What do you got to say? He comes close. Okay. You have to bring your ear. Okay, I'm listening. Brings his ear close to his mouth. The guy goes, hey, I am Malakul Maut. I am the angel of death. And I'm here to take your soul away. So the king goes, what do you mean? You're Malakul Maut. I'm Malakul Maut. I'm the angel of death. I'm here to take your soul away. Give me one chance. I need to go back to my family. Just give me one chance. Let me just say, you know, goodbye to them. Let me kiss my kids. Let me say goodbye to my wife. It's done. You had your chances. You had your choice. You made your choices and you, made, you had your chances. It's time to go. It's time to leave the world. So much people behind me. So many people behind me. All this army behind me. What do I do with them? Don't worry. There will be many kings after you. It's time to go now. So what wealth are we boasting about? What are you boasting about with your life? When you were going to be lowered in a grave, just in one piece of coffin, and people are going to pray, as a poet very beautifully mentions, he says, They make me wear clothes that don't have any sleeves. They make me wear clothes that don't even have any sleeves. They pray a salah which doesn't, have, it doesn't even have ruku and sujood in it. Hoping for Allah Ta'ala to have mercy upon me. So what wealth are you boasting about? What are you, talk to, what are you speaking to people about? Posting about on the internet? I have this and I have that. A third meaning of Fasirin rahimahumullah they give is at ta'awun. Right? Competing with one another. Competing with one another. Right? You see someone with something better than you, like, oh, no, I have to get something better than that. You know, he got it for, you got it for $500, I have to get it for 1000 How can I get it for $1,000? You're competing with one another in wrong things, things that don't matter in the sight of Allah. The hadith of the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet وسلم says, Wallahi mul fakhru akhsha alaykum, walakin akhsha alaykum, and tubsata alaykum, wa dunya kama busitat ala man kana qablakum, fatana fasuha kama tana fasuha, wa tulhikum kama alhatum, o kama kal. That I swear by Allah ta'ala, I do not fear upon you poverty. The Prophet ﷺ says, I do not fear poverty over you. 
I do not fear that you will become poor. Telling his Sahaba, his companions. And this message is for the people, for the entire nation, till the day of Qiyamah. I do not fear poverty over you. What do I fear most over you? That Allah Ta'ala will give you this dunya. And He'll give it to you in abundance. You have a lot of this dunya, right? You'll start competing with one another in it. You start competing with one another in this dunya, about this dunya. And فَتُلْهِيكُمْ كَمَا أَلْهَدْتُمْ Just like how Allah Ta'ala gave to the nations before you. Allah Ta'ala gave them wealth. Allah Ta'ala gave them dunya. They started competing with one another. And it destroyed them just like how it's going to destroy you as well. Those individuals, those people, they started competing in the wrong thing. Until they forgot they had to work for their death. And death was right on top of their heads. Well, there's the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're competing with one another in what? Al-khayr, good. Al-bir, competing with one another. How? In this day and age as well. How can I do good? How can I bring someone towards good? I'm coming to the masjid. I'm commuting to the masjid. Text your friend, hey, you need a ride towards the masjid. I'm going to the masjid. Other than your friend telling you, yeah, I'm going to the movies. You want to come with me to the movies? Right? I'm going, yeah, you got to listen to this song, man. This, this, is a, this is a new jam out, right? Telling people to do wrong. Telling people to do sin. Their sin is upon you and your sin is upon you as well. On the day of Qiyam, what are you going to tell Allah? With what face are you going, what face are you going to show Allah? Ya Allah, I had the opportunity to come to the masjid. Ya Allah, there were people in this dunya. There are people in this world that want to do khayr. They want to do good, right? There are people, old people. To the shabab, to the youngsters in the world, you had the ability to do sujood. Wallahi, they're individuals that would give up their entire life just to do sujood once again in their life. But they can't bow down. They can't go down. They can't do sujood. So what are you competing towards? The companions of Rasulullah as I said, at the time of the Prophet I'm going to end off with this inshallah. The Battle of Tabuk. And this is just an example for you and I to realize that what are you and I trying to accomplish from our lives? What are we trying to get? And the circle that we have, the friends that we have, the people that we have around us, what do we want them to do? Are we forcing them towards khayr? Are we bringing them towards khayr? Or are we taking them towards shar, towards evil? So at the time of Battle of Tabuk, the Prophet ﷺ told Sahaba to spend in the path of Allah, to give sadaqah. So at that time, Umar radiallahu anhu, he had some wealth. So that day, he was very happy. Oh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said that he made an alan, spend in the path of Allah, give sadaqah, so I have a little bit of wealth. So he was very happy. He's like, hey, today is the day I'm going to exceed Abu Bakr. Today is the day I'm going to exceed Abu Bakr. Look at this. I'm going to give sadaqah. I'm going to give charity. Where in this day and age, they're like, hey, give sadaqah in the path of Allah. You're like, hey, where's the fastest way I can get out of the masjid right now? You know, so today... He's like, no, today is the day I'm going to exceed Abu Bakr. Every other amal, Abu Bakr is ahead of me. Every other amal, Abu Bakr is there before me. So, the Prophet ﷺ is sitting down. Umar radiallahu anhu goes home, he comes back. So he comes and he puts his, he gives sadaqah. So the Prophet ﷺ asks him, oh, Abu Bakr, oh, sorry, oh, Umar, what did you give? He said, Ya Nabi Allah, I gave half in the, in the path of Allah and I left half for my family. So the Prophet ﷺ said, MashaAllah, good. Umar radiallahu anhu sits down. Then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes and he gives sadaqah as well. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, what did you give? He said, Ya Nabi Allah, I gave everything in the path of Allah. I did not leave a single thing. To an extent in the riwayat and the narrations that comes, where Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, even the garment, the libas, the garment that he had upon him, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu didn't want that he would wear that garment, right? He wanted to give that in sadaqah as well. So he took out that garment and he gave that in sadaqah as well. And what did he wear? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, in the narration it comes, that he wore some rags. And to tie those up, he took some thorns and he, and he, and he, and he buttoned those with thorns. And like that, he came into the court of the Prophet The Prophet says, Oh Abu Bakr, what did you give? Ya Nabi Allah, I gave everything. So the Prophet وسلم, he's very happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Nabi Allah, Abu Bakr, the libas, the garment that he is wearing right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained all the malaika in the skies to wear the garment like Abu Bakr. Allah ta'ala has ordained and ordered all the malaika in the sky to wear the garment like Abu Bakr is wearing right now. 
And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me down with a message. And what is that message? Hey, you and I hope for what? Ya Allah, please be happy with me. Ya Allah, be happy with me. This is our dua, right? When we make dua after salah, Ya Allah, be happy with me. Ya Allah, be pleased with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Jibreel with a message. And what was that message? Ask Abu Bakr, is he pleased with me? Ask Abu Bakr, is he pleased with me? So with tears in the eyes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he says, Ya Nabi Allah, I am pleased with Allah. Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islam deena wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anabiyya. I'm happy with Allah as my deen. I'm happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as my Lord. I'm happy with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my Nabi, as my Prophet. And I'm happy with Islam as my religion. This is who a Muslim is. This is what you compete in. This is what sabiqu al khayrat means. Compete and hasten towards good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability and the tawfiq to do so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability and the opportunity to compete towards khayr and to figure out what we need to do with our lives before it's over.